Hey, this is Patrick Johnson. I'm the tech support guy here at Better Homes. Uh, you might see me every once in a while, but um, today I'm going to make a video on how to clean up some of the uh, things on your computer for a PC that might be slowing it down, anything that could be causing problems, anything that could just prevent it from running it, it you know, better performance there. Um, I'm also going to do a video for uh, how to do this on a Mac as well at some point. And the other thing is this also, a lot of the information is really similar to what you can do on a phone, just some of the steps. I mean, the location of where you might have to find some of the stuff might be different, but overall, a lot of the same steps on just cleaning up and what to get rid of might be about the same here. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at tech support at uh, betteromaha.com. Um, so I'm going to do a screen share here and I'm just going to go through a handful of different things. And one of the first things that I started off with right before this is I restarted my computer. So that way everything is kind of how it pulls up when you first bring it up. But if you're having any kind of issues, oftentimes just doing a restart will close out anything you don't need, a lot of extra programs that are running in the background, um, you know, anything like that. But uh, so you know, once you do a reboot, if it's still having issues or if you wanna go through all these steps, that's fine. Um, one thing you can always do is just close out any additional programs. I mean, there's a lot of time we might get busy where we've got, you know, a whole bunch of different things running in the background. Um, all of that is using up your system's resources, uh, like its memory and its processing power that is just running in the background. You might not be using it. So the first thing is just, you know, close out of stuff that you're not using. Um, you can either do that by, you know, clicking up here and exiting it out of a program or you know, right clicking and closing it out. Or the other thing is if you right click down here on the manager or on the bar, you can open up this task manager. And then this will give you a list of everything that is running on your computer. Um, so if, for example, I wanted to close off Firefox, I could just do that, right click it and then end task. Um, I mean, that's you know, stuff that you know, probably a lot of people know anyways, but um, the other thing is if you have a lot of tabs on your, your browser too, uh, you know, there's, if you're not using all 18 tabs or whatever it is, close out some of those because those will use up uh, performance as well too. Um, while I'm in the task manager here, I'm gonna look at a couple things. Um, one of them is under the startup section right here. So this just creates a list of everything that starts up with your computer just by default. And if you're not using any of this stuff, like this H key tray, um, I'm gonna just hit disable down here. So that way that doesn't automatically pop up whenever I start the computer because I, I really don't need it. Um, so there's a couple of things here for like my mouse and keyboard and all that, that I'm just gonna turn off. Um, and then I'll just leave like Adobe running, but you know, any of the, the stuff that, that pops up, I don't need it automatically by default every time the computer turns on. So I'm just gonna turn it off so that way it's not you know, eating up resources. Um, so I'm gonna close out of that real quick here. Uh, another thing is down here in the, the system tray, if you look at the little icons down here, again, you've got a handful of programs that start up with the computer that I, I just don't need. So uh, I'm gonna quit out like Skype I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need that. So I'm just going to go through and just exit out of pretty much all of this stuff, except like the audio manager and then antivirus stuff. But um, again, all that stuff just kind of adds up to a point where, you know, it's just running in the background. You might not be using it, but it's, it's just slowly eating away at things. So uh, let me see what else do I have here. One of the other bigger things that you can do is remove old programs. Cause again, uh, the biggest thing is just, you know, what are the stuff that, what's the stuff that you're using? Uh, are there things on your computer that came pre-installed? Are there things that, you know, maybe you haven't used in three years? Um, and again, if you can get rid of it, then help, you know, that helps out everything out here. So uh, what I did is I just went down to the start button here and I typed in the word remove. And the first thing that pops up is add or remove programs. So I'm gonna pull that open here. Um, and then some of this stuff is like preloaded into, uh, into windows when you get it like 3d viewer, I have no intent of ever doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and uninstall that. And you can go through down on this list and just get rid of anything that, that you don't ever plan on using there. But, um, there's that. And then otherwise, another way that people might've seen it before is if you go to the programs and features up here, 
then this is going to pull up a, a list of everything that's installed that that likely you installed here. Uh, so I'm going to come down here. One thing I don't ever use is this Opera web browser. Um, you know, so I'm just going to right click it, I'm going to hit uninstall, and then you know I'm not going to do it on the video, but normally I would just sit there and let it go, and then and go through this list and just get rid of pretty much everything I don't need. A lot of this Microsoft Visual stuff, uh, anything that's Windows or Microsoft related, generally probably want to leave that on, or if it's like Intel or AMD, something that's from the the processor manufacturer, probably worth leaving on there. But you know, if there's um, like if you bought a, a HP and it came with you know 15 different HP utilities and you've never used a single one of them just uninstall them get rid of them you know all those little things just kind of slowly add up to what might be slowing your computer down there um, another handful of things that you can do is all kind of through the settings options here so if you open up the the start menu and you go down to the settings here then one of the things uh, that you might want to do is um, go down to this update and security section here and just check for Windows updates. And if you have any, install them. Because a lot of times they throw in things that might, you know, fix some of the bugs uh, with, your, you know, the computer. Or maybe there was something that, that kind of messed something up in the last update, but you haven't got the fix for it yet. So checking for updates is usually one thing that, that's recommended to do, you know, somewhat often, I guess, or, you know, every few months or whatever. Um, but that can help out on really any kind of device, whether it's a Mac, a PC, a phone, whatever it might be. Um, Another thing that kind of sits in the background and just does stuff and it, it uses up resources is Cortana. If you aren't using Cortana, if you don't actually have the, hey Cortana, you know, give me directions to this or, you know, whatever it is, turn it off. Um, you know, that way it, it's less likely to sit there and again, using up your, your resources just in the background waiting for you to talk to it. Um, so one of the things you can do is literally go through every one of these and it's kind of tedious and boring, but, um, you know, there's some some things in here like uh, gaming, you know, turn off if you don't do any of the gaming stuff on your computer, you know, turn off every one of these little settings in here because it's, you know, it's not really necessary for most people. Um, some of the stuff like privacy, you can kind of go through here and turn off a lot of different little uh, sections in there. Uh, some of it is, you know, uh, related to you know, just what can run in the background, what kind of computers can run in the background, or, uh, you know, if you want to send diagnostics back to, to Microsoft, you know, if like your computer crashed, if you want to send that back, again, a lot of the stuff, it's, it's not very big, it's not, you know, a huge change by itself, but just when you had all these little tiny features that are up, you know, and running at any time, then, you know, that can uh, slowly eat away at, at how much performance you can get out of your computer. Um, one of the other things, the system, yeah, so if you go into the system ones here, uh, there's the power and sleep options. And I believe if you go to additional power settings, it should open up a new window. Um, each computer has kind of like a, a preset saved set of options for a profile for, uh, you know, when it's on the charger versus when it's on the battery on how much power it consumes. And if you've got it to like a power saving mode, like an eco or, you know, whatever they might call it, uh, basically that is going to help improve your battery life, but it's also going to kind of kill performance because it, it throttles things back. So that way it's more driven towards, you know, longer lasting battery. But uh, one of the things you can do is just go to like change advanced power settings. Um, you know, you can kind of go through some of the stuff individually and see if there's maybe like one specific thing that you want to do. But typically, when you open up this menu, um, usually there's a couple different options in there, like uh, you know, it might be like power saving mode or okay, here we go. There we go. So when I opened up this power options, there's a create a power plan, and then you've got a balanced power saver and high performance. So uh, like on that, if you, you know, if your computer's getting a little bit older and you don't really care about battery life because you use it, you know, on the charger all the time, maybe put it on high performance. And then, you know, that way, again, it, it's, it's more driven towards using your computer's full power instead of saving it for battery life. Um, so then that way I've just got that new plan that's now you know, for full power, but I'm gonna switch mine back. Another thing that you can do is also update your antivirus and just run an antivirus scan. So that's gonna depend a little bit if you've got like just the default Windows Defender or if you've got anything like 
uh, McAfee or you know any of the other antivirus out there. But um, you know, check, update that, run a scan because there could be something going on in the background that maybe you didn't install. That's that uh, you know virus that maybe is eating up some of your resources or slowing things down. Um, kind of a couple things related to that as well too. A lot of uh, a lot of programs will do like automated kind of checks and updates um, like your antivirus. Uh, go into the settings and check and see kind of what time it does that at. Because if you have it set to run like every day at noon, but um, you know, obviously you're still working, you need it. Um, then all of a sudden that comes in in the background and that kicks in and that starts doing a lot of things behind the scenes that could be eating up some of your power. Uh, same thing with like cloud updates. If you've got anything that syncs up and it uploads, you know, any kind of pictures or files up to the cloud, um, maybe set on any of that kind of stuff to like midnight, you know, or, or to when the, you know, if it's got an option to when the computer sleeps, anything like that. Uh, basically kind of set any kind of automated tasks like that to not be during the day when you're using it, but to like a, an off time where it's not going to bother you at all. Um, it's kind of going through my list here as well. Uh, Another thing you can do is if you open up the Windows tab here and go to the device manager. So down in the bottom, I just typed in the word device and it opened up device manager is the option right below there. This is just gonna be a list of pretty much all the individual components that are in your computer here. And one thing you can do is um, let's say for example, you know, I wanna look for a new driver update for my wireless card here. So the name of my wireless card, I can either, you know, just right click it right here and go to update driver. And then that way it's gonna then kind of check in with Microsoft and be like, hey, do you know what the newest driver is? Okay, there is one, cool, that's great. And it'll download it and install it. Or the other thing is you can, you know, look for this, like go online and look for, you know, the killer brand, AX1650 or whatever your wireless card is. It might be like an Intel, it might be Qualcomm, Aetheros, something like that. But um, go to the website, find like the official website for it and then, uh, you know, download it and, and install from there. A lot of the times if you do this like right click option right here, it'll maybe kind of find the newest version, but not always. Usually you'll find the more updated versions like on the, the manufacturer's website there. But uh, yeah, if you're having issues with like slow Wi-Fi, you know, check and see if that is, you know, possibility that it could be, you know, if there's a newer driver out there for it. Um, display adapters, sometimes if your computer is, you know, doing weird little glitches and the screen doesn't look right, you know, come into this option and see if there's updated versions for the graphics card. Um, or what's another one, the chipset, which, um, seven hundred. Oh, can't remember exactly where that's at, but um, I mean, there's some of the things here that that you could go through and look for, uh, and see if there's any any updates for that. Yeah. Okay. So like on mine, it took me a second here, but like the chipset family, that's just kind of related to the processor uh, and motherboard kind of section. But um, there's driver updates for that. But that's one thing that you could do, you know, if something runs slow or maybe just do it every once in a while just to see if that helps out with performance. Um, another couple things that you might be able to do is close out of that. If you come down in the start menu down to the windows, administrative tools, uh, defrag, uh, defragment and optimize drives. Basically, this goes through and it it tries to clean up the how everything is saved on your hard drive, so that way it's it's kind of more optimized. There, a lot of computers will do that by default, but if you open that up, um, it should say like when was the last time that this was ran. So on mine, it was 8:29 on one of my drives, and then you know a few days ago on the other one. But you can you know tell it to optimize and it'll sit there and it takes a while, especially if it hasn't been done in a long time, but that just kind of cleans up, you know, how the hard drive is kind of configured and everything's laid out. Um, but again, a lot of computers will do that kind of by themselves already. Uh, another one here is disk cleanup. And if you go in here, it'll ask you what drive you want to pick. Usually you just want to use your C drive. And then this just goes through and it's like clearing out the cache and cookies in your web browser, just a lot of little tiny files that um, might be downloaded, 
partially or little settings or something like that for how it opens up a program or anything like that. But um, it's nothing that's really going to like delete off anything off your computer, like any files or anything like that. But it's just kind of uh, some some little operational files that might not always be needed. And like on this one, it says I've got 10 gigs of downloads. Um, so when you go through here, I mean, you can just get rid of all this stuff and then just click OK and or hit clean up system files. Um, it might sometimes it pops up with like a second window that asks, you know, which ones you want to go through. But um, I'm not going to do it because it takes a little bit here. But again, this is 10 gigs of files that I can just delete off my, my computer. And um, the thing with any kind of storage space is uh, every time you want to open up a program, every time you want to run something, your computer then has to go and look onto like your hard drive and find out where that program is. So if your drive is completely full of programs you don't use, if you've got, you know, tons and tons of old pictures and videos and stuff like that, um, then it's got to kind of sort through that mess and figure out, be like, okay, there's that program that I want to get. Um, so cleaning off some of that stuff help, helps speed up a little bit. Uh, the other thing is if, uh, if you have a ton of old pictures and videos, things like that, you know, if you don't need them anymore, uh, if there were, you know, something from, you know, five years ago that you're never going to use, you know, feel free to delete it. Or the other option is put it on like a cloud storage backup or like an external hard drive, something like that. But if you can kind of get that off of off of your main hard drive there, um, then that'll help again. So when your computer is looking for files, it doesn't have to sort through tons and tons of stuff that's just old junk. Um, and I'm trying to think what else might there be. Yeah, I mean, typically kind of minimizing all the the programs that are running in the background, all the programs that you have on your computer, all the programs that start up, um, that's going to be about the biggest things that you can do there. Um, going through and, opt, you know, updating, you know, the operating system, update the programs you have too. So if you have, you know, uh, Photoshop installed, go and look for the, the newest version of Photoshop and see if, you know, maybe there's a newer version that, that runs a little bit better, maybe cleaned up and fixed some bugs. Um, closing off some of the old programs, things like that. Uh, one other thing is if your computer is well, let me backtrack. I pulled up, uh, right clicked and opened up the task manager again here. And it's got this little performance section. Um, if your computer is constantly, like your, your CPU is, you know, sitting here and it's just at a hundred percent and you're not doing anything other than, you know, web browsing or anything like that. Uh, that could be a sign that maybe if your computer is a few years old, it's just struggling to keep up uh, with what you're doing. Um, so that's something that maybe you can kind of leave this running in the background, use your computer for a little bit and just see, you know, kind of where that line goes to during the day. Um, another thing that you might see is like your memory. If, you know, right, right now it says I'm using 3.9 out of 15.9 you know, gigs. Um, so I'm using about a quarter of it. And it, it's one of those things that, um, I ran into this example on my work computer. By the time that I open up a web browser and it's, it's got all the security things running in the background and I get a couple apps open, it's automatically running at 90%. And anytime I run anything, all of a sudden that just maxes out and it, it's just constantly, it doesn't have enough memory to kind of keep everything going that I need it to do. So uh, in that case, if, if your memory is getting maxed out, that's something that you can on most computers, you can buy more memory and just add that in there. Maybe you could double it up and that can, you know, help out and speed up some performance too. Uh, and there's always some different upgrades you can do, like just changing out a, to a newer hard drive. That'll help programs load up as well too. But um, yeah, I mean, if you have any kind of questions on this, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, oops. But yeah, again, uh, hopefully maybe some of that helps. Uh, you know, I kind of went through a lot of that really quickly. You know, maybe just pause the video. And again, if you have questions, uh, tech support at betterhomes.com. You know, feel free to reach out to me. But yeah, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Thanks.